But today's video, I wanted to really just kind of black and white show you four or five good arrow options to consider, including the components. And this is all based on actually hunting with these arrows and using them in the field. Here we go. We're talking pro pumps, guys. These are from Easton. They are aluminum on the inside, carbon on the outside. They're extremely straight. The total weight is 436 grains and the front of center is 18% according to Archery Pal, an app that I have on my phone. So either way, no matter what calculator you use, they'll all be a little different. We can agree it's definitely over 15% FOC front of center which I think is key for steering fixed broadheads, which I'm a broadhead dude. This is what my pro comp looks like. I've done an entire arrow build, I'll link it up there. What I've come to find with this is, it's a very straight arrow, but you can risk bending it if you hit like anything hard. Like maybe you got some rebar in one of your 3D targets you hit, you could bend it. So you're gonna have to spend test these quite often, but they are the most accurate, consistently spined tolerance. They all match up, they're all uniform which is gonna give you good flight characteristic. I'm running the hybrid HPs. These are like a blazer. They're made by AAE. These steer a fixed broadhead, maybe the best out of your entire lineup. Now, some guys will disagree and say, no, it's the hybrid hunter that Iron Will Bill makes, or maybe it's the Max Hunter. Cool, order them. Both those veins are loud, and this one's definitely on the louder side, not the quieter side. So if you're worried about sound from the veins, I would go max stealth tried and true 100%, but I haven't had any problems shooting some animals with this, and this is a great option. What you need to consider is the components for a four mil, which is where most arrows fall short, which is why I also brought the Easton Axis long range into the mix and built this arrow ready to go. This arrow is the 300, and I put in the Easton titanium half out. This total arrow weight is 440 and the FOC is at 19% and it's four mil. I think those are the two best options for components when it comes to four mil. X impacts from Black Eagle are awesome. They have a focus system. It's not my favorite, but it's good. You can broadhead index with that one. I like this one. I actually hot melted this in and it gives me the option to run any standard size broadhead, which I would probably run a Grim Reaper Micro Hades three blade with that standard. And that would be a good flying, awesome dart, four millimeter, best of both worlds. It is gonna have a little bit of weakness here where you might wanna order a collar from Iron Will or another competitor, that could help bolster it. But I think if you're gonna do a four, four millimeter option based on my experience, I would say go with a titanium versus what comes stock with these arrows, which is an aluminum half out. I'm not digging that. I think the titanium, it's expensive, but I think it's worth upgrading to. If you're not gonna worry about price, then I would go full send on the Snyder Core system here. What you see is on the Snyder Core system, 125 as far as the head, 10 grain collar, the shank goes down in and I screwed in a hit that weighs 25. So total weight up front is pretty hefty. Um, and then when I'm hunting, I just use the single bevel Snyder Core system. It's the same exact deal, except for just the, the single bevel. And I've obviously matched my helical to the left, to the bevel left, and I feel like that is one of the best systems you can do for a four mil. So again, go with the titanium half out if you're not into hot melting or doing all these components and you wanna be able to screw broadheads and fill points in and out, go the titanium route. Plus you can use standard, you're not stuck with deep six, which is the smaller one, or go with the iron wheel. Now let's talk about another arrow and two options. One I did last year, one I'm doing this year, and you guys can decide. This one is a RIP TKO 300 with max hunters. It is 442 grains total weight, and the FOC is at 20%. It is this arrow right here. I shot a lot of elk with this last year. I shot an antelope, three bears, turkey, really good arrow. So I have 125 point up front, but this right here is the Trad 600 from Gold Tip. And that is a half out and it's made of stainless steel and it weighs 72 grains. 
and I cut this arrow just a little shorter than I normally do. I'm still clearing my shelf on my rest, but the FOC is insane on this. I went with a Max Helical with the Max Hunters. They are louder, but they steer a fixed broadhead, arguably one of the best options out there, period. Again, my suggestion would be if you're worried about the sound, drop down to a Max Stealth. Again, I don't run four. I usually do three veins. I feel like if three veins can't steer it, then I did something wrong with my arrow build. Four is just unnecessary weight in the back end. And again, I don't run expandables. If I did, I might consider going with the four vein. I do use a four vein on my target arrows and that's a whole nother discussion. But here's proof that I do do it and I use a Bitsenberg jig for that kind of stuff. All these fletches have been done with the Arizona Mini Max to the left. I have several of them. I can fletch up a lot of arrows in a short amount of time and I think it's affordable. This is what I used last year. And then this year for the five millimeter department, I'm running a podium, Josh's company, 50 grain titanium half out. Fits like a glove on the RIP TKO. 125 point up front. HP's on the backs, max helical. FOC of 20%. So the total arrow weight is 425. So now I'm stuck with the dilemma of figuring out am I gonna run with RIP TKOs this year? If I do, it'll be this arrow. It'll be the one I just talked about with the podium. Or am I gonna run with the pro comps with the iron wheels? Or am I gonna go with the east and long range with the titanium and a micro Hades three blade? Let me talk about broadheads as a kind of a bonus tip to this video because it is kind of, I don't wanna bore you guys to death, but what I recommend for uh, broadheads based on just my experience. And my experience is testing a lot of different broadheads, mainly to see which ones fly the best at long range, which ones resist planing. They're all gonna plane, but which ones resist the most, which ones are sharp, how they've done on animals, not only penetration, but entry, exit hole, things like that. If I use this, I feel like I can take maybe shots that I wouldn't with anything else, meaning maybe I would take a frontal or a quartering two in front of the shoulder or of severe quartering away. And I know that this, this broadhead is gonna get through. So penetration is gonna be supreme with the iron wheel, like supreme. Blood trials are not supreme. I would say it's like 50-50 for me, really good or non-existent. But I will say any animal I've ever shot with these have not gone far. Usually died in sight, so I'm not, I've only had one bear go a little further, but he actually bled really well. Whereas I shot a different bear, no blood whatsoever, but he made it 20 yards. Uh, I shot a bull and he died in sight with these. So it's a really good option. They're made in America. Iron Wheel Bill's a friend of mine. He's a friend of the channel. I respect that he's a mechanical engineer and a bow hunter through and through. The other option I would recommend is the uh, Grim Reaper, Micro Hades 3 blade. This also is made in America. It has the same kind of aggressive heat treatment, really good materials, very sharp. I don't sharpen these. They're so affordable, I would just buy new ones. So I generally have practice ones that I practice with. And when I screw this on, I, it's a virgin broadhead until it goes through an animal. It does fly better than almost anything out there that I have found to date. Like long distance, 70 plus yards, seems to do really well with the HPs or the Max Hunters. And it's not loud even though it's vented and it's got that chisel tip and I have put it through several shoulder blades and successfully got into the lungs and recovered out. I shot a bull last year in Montana, high shoulder, and it went through both lungs and he fell within sight. Uh, so it's just a really good option and it's way more affordable if a budget. So I kind of say the Iron Wheel is kind of a higher end budget and the Grim Reaper is your lower end. And there's other options out there. If you are going to use an expandable, out of all the ones I've tested, I would say Severs have probably caught my eye. I believe they just came out with a 175. That seems like a sweet spot or a one and a half. Or maybe even Grim Reaper has their Fatal Steel. I've shot a few animals with those and they're good. But again, I like to go back to fixed broadheads, which requires more tuning, which is where I wanted to finish this video today. I've tried putting arrows in a bow press and pressing them down and seeing which way they bend and rotating them to try to find the weak spot. I've used the Ram Spine Tester. I have tried all those things to try to identify the weakest spot of the spine to where I can have my cock vein go right glued right on at the weakest spot of the spine. So when the arrow leaves the bow that it's kind of pushing down which it wants to naturally. I'm again, I've also done clocking where I shoot arrows bare shaft one foot away, three feet, six feet, nine feet, 
and note the rotation of the arrow as it leaves the bow. Majority of the arrows that I shoot for whatever reason out of Matthews, for whatever reason gas strings, typically go left out of my bows. And I've not really had anything go out right. And I've used really like high frame rate cameras to identify that. And so I've always just matched that. I don't think that's necessary, but I think it's a good step that I like to take. And then the other unnecessary step for me is a lot of bare shaft tuning, which we've done. And I think it is good for sure. I don't think a bullet hole with veins tells you the full story. I've also noticed that a lot of guys knock tune. I have definitely tried knock tuning and pulled my hair out, rotating the knock an eighth or 120 degrees even, and trying to figure out which way does that knock need to be to get the arrow to fly the best from five feet, seven feet, 11 feet through paper. I've even done bare shaft tuning with 20 yards, 30 yards. And so I'd say bare shaft tuning to me uh, is probably one of the better options, especially if you're like limited on having a broadhead target. I'm not. So I generally use broadheads and they tear up my targets and I just replace the core on the 365s. But if you were cognizant of, I don't want to ruin my target, maybe you should bare shaft to get close. But at the end of the day, what's worked the best for me is to get the broadhead, shoot it first, shoot the fill point at 20, 30, 50, and they should be hitting very close. And I need to make any adjustments to my rest, fine tune it, I will. And then honestly, I go out to 70, 80, 90, even 100 yards, and I'm expecting those arrows to match up. That would be the broadhead first, and then the fill point. Guys, a lot of information at you here. I just wanted to do finally do a video of just, this is my opinion, no one else's. You gotta do you, you gotta test and tinker to figure out what is gonna do, give you the most confidence. And you guys all know confidence ain't purchased, it's earned. So go earn it, smash the sub if you're into this arrow conversation and let us know what arrow are you running and what components for 2023.